allow me to introduce engineer Sleiman al Mazroor, the CEO of the National Industrial and Logistics Development Program, as known as NIDLIP, for the opening statement for our gate. Honorable guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's my great pleasure to be here in such an important, important forum, such amazing delegates. And my special thanks goes to uh, General Authority of Civil Aviation for organizing such an important event. A Roman philosopher once said, there is no favorable winds for those with no direction. There is no favorable winds for those with no directions. I'm sorry to capture this metaphor from the maritime industry, but I think there was no Roman philosopher when the aviation started. But seriously, the meaning of having the right direction, the right vision, is an important matter. And I will quote, all success stories start with a vision. And successful visions are based on strong pillars. These brief words by His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, explain what Saudi Vision 2030 is all about. And we are lucky that Vision 2030 provide us with a clear roadmap to transform the kingdom into prosperous nation and vibrant society and thriving economy. The National Industrial Development and Logistic Program is a great example of the impact created by this great vision. Nedlib, for short, integrates the key sector of mining, industry, logistics, and energy via more than 300 game-changing initiatives. This event is one of them. To achieve clear and well-defined goals and targets, including improvement of local regional and international connectivity of trades and transport networks, transforming the kingdom to global logistics hub and unlocking the potential of promising industry, such as aviation. And we have no doubt in our ability to achieve that ambition goal. This level of confidence is based on facts. In the five years past since 2030 vision was launched, we started to enjoy the fruit of peers across all aspects of our lives. The contribution of non-oil sector in the GDP grows to 59%, reducing our dependency in oil. Foreign direct investment has been troubled. Private sector contribution into GDP was doubled. Saudi Arabia ranked economy the second among the G20 in the third and fourth quarter of last year. We also ranked the second in the digital competitiveness among the G20 countries. Number of factories grows about 50% in the few years, from 7,000 to 10,200. The time required to establish and register a company reduced from 15 days to less than 30 minutes. Participation of women in the labor force was doubled from 19% to 33%. The kingdom comes second globally in COVID resilience and recovery. These are just some of many transformational success stories that we had achieved in Saudi Arabia since the launch of Vision 2030 and its programs. Provide proving Saudi ability to achieve its ambition goals. And I am sure that transportation and logistics set sector, including aviation, wouldn't be any different. At Nidlib, we proud to be investor-centric program that cater for both international and local investors. 
and work through the fundamentals of risk and return, minimizing the risk and maximizing the return to the investor in a sustainable way. And according to that, our 300 initiatives offers a well-developed infrastructure, including digital infrastructure and plug and play value parks, enabling regulations that provide sustainable business environments, available of resources that include metallic, non-metallic raw material, skilled and qualified human capital, and world-class research centers. And finally, access to local and international markets through state-of-art multi-mode logistical hubs, local off-takes, optimized routes, and international trade agreements. A few months ago, the National Transport and Logistics Strategy was launched. Entails with more uh, mega project to scale our infrastructure and provide high quality services. Today, the aviation strategy was launched. The aviation strategy that linked to our national transportation strategy that linked to NIDLIB strategy that linked to the vision. This is how the roadmap is linked all over uh, the vision sectors. And with the power of integration of these sectors, in energy, industry, mining, and logistics, and with the power of the fourth industrial revolution, we will have a smart mine connected to a smart factory that's connected in a smart industrial city that's powered by a smart grid and moving goods and services through smart multi-mode hubs. These hubs will achieve to us a clean energy, shortest routes, and optimal delivery means, on-demand manufacturing, and all of which will achieve the required transition to cleaner, more productive network of services. The Saudi Vision 2030 positive impact is not limited to Saudi Arabia. Becoming an industrial powerhouse and global logistic hub will open new possibilities and new opportunities of products and markets, improve the connectivity between continents, and enhance the international trades. Therefore, we continue to invite the international community to be part of our journey toward creating prosperous, uh, prosperous future for human around the world. And I look forward to listening to upcoming panel because they are the experts in that area. And thank you for having me. And now with our panelists, we'll start with uh, Mr. Teddy Zibitz, CEO of Saudi Cargo. We'll start with Teddy. So COVID changed the industry. The rates changed, the need for air cargo changed, the mix of the aircraft, the requirements for the mix of the aircraft changed, the capacities changed, and so on. So what's the outlook for the industry? And uh, do we expect the industry to react in a better way? And God forbid another pandemic comes uh, any time far away from today. And do we expect, because of the recent changes and the supply chain, how they got reconfigured, do we expect new markets for the air cargo? OK, thank you very much, Soror. I think that um, many of us have already forgotten the start of the pandemic. Uh, we didn't have many months to prepare ourselves for that situation. Uh, it only took into the winter of 2019, but by the 11th of March, uh, when the pandemic was called in 2020, 
we had a completely new situation. 50% or more of the capacity was gone in the industry overnight. And the sector had to adapt to that situation, uh, bringing in goods to society and customers on an effective and efficient way. And I think that the uh, sector really stepped up to the plate, uh, delivering pharmaceuticals and food and machinery and e-commerce to society and the public in a fairly effective way, given the situation that we had. So what we have learned from our point of view uh, in Saudi Cargo is that we can actually do monumental things in a very short period of time. But not least that the ecosystem, the ground handlers, the airports and the airlines and the customers need to find solutions whereby we can serve society and customers effectively. And I hope, this is a hope, that we can continue down that path of finding solutions <coughs> as an ecosystem. Why would we operate anywhere in the world uh, within 12 to 24 hours and connect continents and then the cargo standing on the ground for weeks? It doesn't make any sense. So we should really use this opportunity that we have learned over the past two years to continue finding solutions for customers and society. That's what I hope for. That's what we are working for. Uh, new markets? Yes, we are starting new markets. We are looking at new markets constantly, but we are also looking at new customer segments and growing customer segments. Uh, I just want to mention something that is probably known by many of you, but e-commerce. E-commerce have doubled over the past uh, four years and will add another 50% to its volume in the next four years. That puts a lot of uh, positive pressure on uh, all the uh, actors, not least us. If the customer needs their goods within 72 hours any, anywhere in the world, it puts on, on a positive pressure to deliver that type of promise, and we are very excited about that. That is, of course, uh, primarily in Asia, China, US, and parts of Europe, but there are also other customer segments that we are focusing on, uh, which will then open uh, mm. new destinations uh, for us in the coming years. Um, we expect more freighters in the mix in Saudi and others? Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Uh, if you look back before 2019 and before, 50% of the industry's uh, capacity and, and revenues were stemming from uh, daily capacity, and that will not happen going forward. In, over the next decade, you will see a mix rather around 30 to 70 percent, where 70 percent will be on freighters. And therefore, we need as an industry to find out how we can um, uh, add more freighters uh, as capacity to satisfy the customers, because that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, and we are looking at that, and uh, the entire industry is working with that. And I can see some familiar faces from some of the OEMs, the Boeings and the Airbuses here, which are also now after a break where they didn't produce that many freighters are now going back and uh, offering uh, freighter um, products. And that's of course something that we need to discuss uh, with these, but also with the customers. Because as Faisal is saying, it's not only about uh, the hardware, it's also about the software. So how can we develop that so we get real-time tracking uh, like we do for some of the uh, e-commerce operators, real-time tracking all the way through the system. So it's not only the hardware, it's also the software that needs to be developed. And that's the type of discussions we already have with Boeing and, and others on how we can develop that as an airline. So a uh, question, leveraging what uh, Seth Faisal and Teddy were just mentioning regarding the human capital investment and the, uh, the skills needed. How far, especially with Saudi Arabia, do you see is that, that gap being on where we are today and where it needs to be uh, tomorrow? And if you can elaborate on that. Well, um, being a, a lecturer at a university in logistics, I can say that we are not that far away, but that has more to do with other countries, also a lack of uh, logistics uh, development and uh, education. But we have to have programs in place. We need, as a private sector, to team up with universities and institutions to build these programs so that they have relevance for the industry, not only for us, but also for other sectors. So 
we are trying to do that. Uh, how far are we away on a scale from 1 to 10? I don't want to get uh, into that. But we need to start that right now. We need to put a, a lot of effort and investment into this, uh, into this scene as soon as possible.